My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, My Brother Joe. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight is the field of neurosurgery. The object and point, two tickets of admission to a baseball game. The case in point, Joseph William Lockwood. He's 10 years old. One Saturday morning, he wakened to a day bright with promise. But through a chance of fate, it turned out differently than he expected. This is the account of that day. Hey, Dad. Oh, sure, just a couple of scratches. How about Joe? Did you see him? How is he? You were here first. Haven't you seen him? No, I couldn't stand. I, I just couldn't take it. I'd break up seeing Joey lying in there. Believe me, son, that wouldn't be any good at all. Joe's hurt, Dad. Don't you want to see him? Sure, I do, but I just told you. If I saw Joey now, I'd break up. That wouldn't help things, would it, son? Yes, it wouldn't. Wait, Sam. What's happened between your mother and me? You know how much you fellows mean to me. You and Joy. You know how I think about you. Sure, Dan. I know how you feel.
5,900, Miss Swenson. All right, thanks very much. Dr. Bridger, the x-rays are in there, my boy. Yeah, let's go. If anything happens, call us right away. All right, Doctor. Bye, Nurse. Idea a little better than the answer. 
Why? The pressure's up, the pulse is slow, he's not improving at all. That's true, but there's one thing we have to remember. He's had no lucid interval. There's still no localizing sign. So we have to go on the basis of the primary damage to the brain produced by the blow could account for the whole picture. There's not much we can do about a bruised brain. How can we be sure he doesn't have an epidural or subdural along with the contusion? Pretty hard question to answer, especially in view of the fracture. I'm glad we put in a call for the staff consul. It's all a question of calculated risk, Lou. As much as we want that patient to live, we've got to remember we're not in the chairing section. We're not sitting out there with a the room that's around the field. It's always our problem to make the best possible decisions based on the facts at hand. Okay? I follow you. So the quiet, desperate struggle for the life of 10-year-old Joseph Lockwood continues. In order to aid the patient's respiration as much as possible, a tracheotomy is performed. An opening is made in the cartilage of the trachea, or windpipe, and a metal tube is inserted down through this opening, so the patient is no longer breathing through his mouth, but through the temporary emergency device. In this way, the air passage is more easily kept clear of fluids which tend to collect and obstruct the patient's breathing. The oxygen supply is then regulated to conform with this procedure. Well, that's it, Pierce. Yes. You're welcome, Doctor. Ready? Right. Hi. Hi, John. Is it moving all right? Yeah. Good airway, exception of a strength field. Respiration to becoming a little slower, though. Okay, then. Thanks a lot. Right. long time. Now let me hold on to you for just a minute. Tell me not to worry. Tell me everything's going to be all right. I can't, Mother. Joe's hurt. There's no use pretending he's not. Is he badly hurt? The doctor said he's critical. They're doing everything they can. Don't you want to see him? Maybe not right now, son. I'd like to rest a while. I'm not very strong, you know. Terrible strain. Hello, Lorraine. Grief. Every day that I've known you, you've brought nothing but grief. Now, wait a minute, Lorraine. Use your head. This is no time for that. Come and sit with me, Stanley. You've grown so tall, I hardly recognize you. Come and sit down. Talk to me. You make me feel so much better. It's a terrible strain. I need help. I need your help, Stanley. Come and sit down. Why do you worry about yourself, Mother? Joe's the one that's hurt, not you. Why don't you worry about him? Please, Stanley. Don't talk to me like that. Not now. Not with Joey in there. It's cruel. I don't know what it is at a time like this. I don't know what it is to be a mother. I just don't know. No, I guess I don't. Do you? Yeah, all right, Frank. We got the parents consent. 
It's all lined up for us, Bill. Yeah, we'll be up right away. That's man? Uh-huh. Frank Kirkland. He's still a patient while you're an x-ray. He's waiting for us in 15. Right, let's go. You had nothing for the boys. They're not even a bad father. You're no father at all. And I suppose you're the loving mother. The loving, devoted mother. Don't make me laugh. You fool. You stupid, conceited fool. Be quiet. Stand. Both of you, be quiet. If you can't act decent, then get out. Leave right now. I'll look after Joe. Wait a minute, son. He's done without you for a long time. We both have. We don't need either one of you. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if I ever see you again. You can walk out that door and be gone forever. We're not going to miss you. You're supposed to be our mother and father. I don't understand you. I don't know you. I never did know you. The same for Joe. We've been so busy fighting that we never had a chance to know you. Go on. Leave right now. Take your fighting outside. Go out and fight on the sidewalk. Stanley, please don't. Please, nothing. I've heard it all my life. I've heard all I want to hear. Fighting, arguing, calling names. Can't you ever be nice? Can't you act like a mother and father are supposed to act? This is cool. Their folks are nice. They like each other. Why can't you be like them? Even now, Joey in there, all banged up. All you can do is fight and argue. I, I know what you're like now. I didn't want to, but I, I finally made up my mind. You don't care about Joe. You don't care about me. Well, that goes both ways. We don't care about either one of you. Go on, leave right now. You, you probably got things to do. Forget about me. Forget about Joe. And you can count on it. You can count on it for sure. We're going to forget about you. Once again, a most critical problem is met with the most critical decision. With the patient deteriorating and his coma deepening, the possibility of a blood clot, however slight, cannot be ruled out. There's little hope in performing the operation, but there's no hope at all if the operation is not performed. Openings approximately one half inch in diameter are made on both sides of the skull in the temporal area, and the exposed surfaces examined for evidence of epidural or subdural blood clots. 
the little hazard in the procedure compared to what might be gained from it. The struggle goes on to the end, to the bitter, incontestable end. Take off a little early. My kid's birthday today. Like to be home when he wakes up, see him open his present. Sure, I'll go right ahead. You say hello to the way for me. Right. See you tomorrow, John. Thanks a lot. Well, hey, Lou. Yeah. yeah? Just thought I'd remind you. What's that? Drive carefully, will you? final observation regarding the outcome of tonight's case. A physician faced with the problem of managing a head injury received from a severe blow cannot always predict the outcome or determine at once the course of immediate and future treatment. Close observation and every therapeutic advantage is utilized in the hope that a tragedy such as this one can be averted. <laughs> 